Well, we are the station that holds people in power accountable, and that reporting is getting results along a dangerous road. Good evening, I'm Mary Alice Demler. And hello everyone, I'm Scott Levin. Of course, we're talking about Niagara Falls Boulevard and the dangers to people trying to cross the roadway there. The state planned a year-long study, then wouldn't talk to us about it. Well, we finally got answers, and two on your sides, Emily Lampa is live tonight to tell us about them. Emily. Scott and Mary Alice, persistence definitely counts because for the past week we've been trying to get somebody from New York State Department of Transportation to talk to us about the pedestrian dangers out here on Niagara Falls Boulevard because this is a state road. They're ultimately responsible for it. So after all of our reporting and the resulting pressure from local lawmakers, they finally decided to make somebody available to talk to us and it appears they have decided to take a more active stance. What we'll do is some, you know, near term improvements if it's warranted. Todd Westice is the chief of staff at the state DOT. Up until this phone conversation, the agency stuck to its year long timetable for a study of Niagara Falls Boulevard. But after another person died crossing the road this past weekend, just hours after we showed Robin Schiminger some of the problems, the assemblyman sent this letter to the DOT yesterday stating this situation should be a top, top priority for New York State Department of Transportation. And now DOT tells two on your side they will work with the towns of Tonawanda and Amherst to make changes sooner rather than later. What are examples of near-term solutions? Well, near-term solutions, we'll look at, uh, you know, one of the easier ones is look at all the pavement markings. Do they need to be refreshed? Do they need to be upgraded to a standard that's more reflective under low light conditions? We'll do the same with signs. We'll look at the signs to make sure that they are currently serviceable. They can be seen by the drivers, be seen by the pedestrians. We'll also look at things like countdown timers. Are they functioning as part of a signal system? Are the signals timed correctly? These are some of the, uh, you know, the issues that we'll look at immediately. At the same time, they will conduct their year-long study. Also, starting within the next few weeks, public outreach and education. This is video two on your side captured yesterday. Within the span of just 20 minutes, we saw pedestrians and bicyclists darting across outside of crosswalks about this culture of jaywalking. Well, it's, you know, there's the jaywalking issue, which again, that's where the law enforcement community can clearly be a help in, in changing behavior. Um, we also have a, a statewide campaign that'll be focused locally called the CBC campaign that really educates folks as far as what their responsibility is to, you know, walk in the areas that are built for them. Now, there was also a question about funding for all of the improvements that they're talking about because it costs money, not just to make the improvements, but also for this education and enforcement. So we asked the DOT about that, and of course, we'll have that coming up straight ahead at 6 p.m. For now, I'm Emily Lampa reporting live from Niagara Falls Boulevard, Channel 2 News.